everybody. Morning. 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 Is, isn't it exciting to be a Christian? Well, I tell you, it's really a great. Have you ever seen Christ working in your life? God working, using you? We have a visitor back in the booth back here. I, I don't know whether I should say this or not, but he, his name is Alex, and he was telling me that he was in a lot of pain simply because he rode a bull in the rodeo many, many times. He said he made a lot of money riding the bull. And I told him I was very acquainted with the bull. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I, that's what I told him. <laughs> Alex, it's good to have you. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody, you're in a store, somebody walks up to you and say, calls you by name, and you look at that person, well, who in the world are you? Have you been there? I think we all have. They talk as if they know you. They know all about your family. They don't know all about the things that you've done in your life. You keep looking at them. Who in the world is this guy? What, 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 how do I know this guy? Have you ever been there? Finally, you might get up enough nerve and you look at him and say, who are you? Then after they tell you who you are, I'm, well, I'm your father-in-law or something like that. <laughs> uh, you... you uh, Oh, you're so embarrassed that you couldn't remember ever meeting Several years ago, Vera was having some eye problems. We took her to the optometrist out in the mall in Sears there, Dr. Robbins. And he came out and found out that her eyes were having strokes and there was a lot of blood that was blocking her vision. So he sent us down to Dr. Morgan and we went into Dr. Morgan, got him that same day. And as the technician, the young lady, was taking Vera through the steps, the preliminary steps, she told us that Vera was going to have uh, x-rays made of her eyes. And she found out quickly that I like to joke around, I like to have fun. And she looked at me before she left, she says, would you do me a favor? I says, what's that? Would you get John? Just put him in his place. Just send all in the front of him. So I looked at her and said, well, tell me about him. She told me about his education, where he lived, about his wife's name, his children's names, and a great big old list of things that she told me. Evidently, she went around and told everybody in the office there that I was going to do something to put John in his place. John came around to get Vera. I looked at him and said, Well, John, John, it's been a long time. How, how have you been? He, he looked at me and I said, How's your wife? And I called her by name. I can't remember what her name was. He looked up another look at me. And I said, Well, last time I saw you, she was pregnant with your second child. I said, I already have called him by name. I said, What was your second child? A little girl? I told you it was one of these. He looked at me. <laughs> I had him going, and finally he looked around and saw everybody in the office doubled up laughing. He looked at me and says, who put you up to this? <laughs> but can you imagine him going? I, I got thinking about all these things this week. What would you do if I asked you who you are? Who are you? Ruth was telling me that of an activity that she uses in her groups with the, in drug and alcohol abuse counseling. She might have 15, 20 different people, and she would pass out a piece of paper with a pen and ask them to finish the sentence, I am blank. How would you do it? I thought about this. I wrote down, well, I'm Phil Faust. I'm a father of three lovely children. Steve included. <laughs> I, I, I am a grandfather of three lovely girls, and I'm a great grandfather of four children that I love dearly. I am a minister of the a church, a congregation that I love dearly, and I'm so proud to be part of their lives. And I kept thinking about how I would answer this. But then I got thinking, how does this relate 
to our relationship with Jesus Christ. How would you complete this sentence? As a Christian, I am. I want you to think about that. As a Christian, I am. Now, your answers might be entirely different than mine, but just as good. But my mind began going a mile a minute. I think maybe at my age I might say two mile a minute. <laughs> and I got writing down things that I am as a Christian. And I want to share some of those things with you this morning because there's an ultimate ulterior motive in my doing so. If I were to share all the things that I thought about during that particular time, this is Thursday night that we talked about, I don't think there'd be enough time in the day for me to even begin to tell you everything that went through my mind. But the very first thought, as a Christian, I am a sinner saved by grace. I think almost every one of you will put something down very similar to that. That I'm a sinner saved by grace. In Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 8, Paul writes to the church of Ephesus, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And are raised up together and made, to, made, us, make a, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and the kindness towards us, to Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that of not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace are you saved and not of yourselves. We can't save ourselves. Even though Peter on the day of Pentecost looked to the God multitude and he said, save yourself from this unborn generation. But the saving came by their accepting through faith the will of God. Jesus Christ, his Savior. And I want you to think, what makes us different than a person in the world that's never been a Christian? It's the grace of God. The fact that we've been washed in his blood. That we have repented of those things that we have done that are wrong. And surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ for him to control. Yes, one of the greatest things that we have as Christians, we can honestly say and we stand up and proudly say, for the sake of the glory of Jesus Christ, I am a sinner saved by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. What else can we do? What else can we say? I, I, I like this. I, I, as a Christian, I, 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 can, I am a child of a king. What you think about that? Who's the king? Who's the king of kings, Lord of lords? Jesus Christ. Who's the almighty in control of all the universe? Not just the world. Almighty God. And the beauty of being a Christian is the fact that we are his child. I want you to listen to a couple of scriptures here. Romans the 8th chapter verses 16 and 17. The Spirit of itself bears with us with our spirit that we are the children of God. Listen to that. We are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him that we may be glorified together. Man, do you get the impact of that particular verse? As a Christian, we become a child of God. And being a child of God, we become the joint heirs with God. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. What does it mean to be a joint heir with God? He owns everything. He owns everything. I, I, I don't have to fear what tomorrow may we hold because I am God's child, a joint heir with Christ. And you are too. In 1 John, the third chapter, the very first verse. 
Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the child of God, the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. I changed one word in that from sons to child, children of God. In the Greek, it is an emphasis of a, a uniform concept, being called the sons of God. We're talking about all human beings being the child of sons of God. It's used in the generic and not in the particular. But do we act as though we're the child of God, the sons of God? Do, do we show forth His praises and the things that we do? How often do we allow self to come between us and God? I think it's something we need to work on and to honor and to respect and to strive to obtain the fact that we, as a Christian, we are the child. Let we go on. Even though we're a child of God, I think we're slaves <coughs> to God. As a Christian, as a Christian, I am a slave to the Almighty God. I, I like Paul. And I, I, I was wanting to use some of these scriptures, but I didn't know which one to use. So I'm going to just going to say it in general. He begins his letters by saying, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but many times when he uses those terms, the word that he's translated servant is also translated slave. I am a slave to Jesus Christ. It's not my will. It's not the things that I want. It, it's not the idea that I am preeminent. He is the one that's preeminent. And I submit myself to him as a slave, praying that his will may be done in my life. We go on. There's a passage that we find in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, 19th and 20th verse. Most likely we'll spend most of the time here. But listen to this word, these words. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have of God. And you are not your own. Hear that. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your bodies and in your spirit, which are God's. Think. First of all, we see the implication of being a slave. We're not our own because we're bought with a price. But as a Christian, I need to realize that I don't belong to myself. <laughs> I, I, I've got to say this. And I, I, I say it with all love in my heart to the people that I'm talking about. But I get so upset when I hear a woman that's had an abortion say, It's my body. I can do with it what I want. It's not your body. You've been bought with a price. Well, you belong to God. And you are not your own. And I think we ought to realize that we don't belong to ourselves. We offer ourselves on the sacrifice of love, a, a living sacrifice, according to Romans the 12th chapter. That God might be glorified through us. Let me go on with that particular verse. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I wonder how many of us we take God with us some of the places we go. I, I, can, I can remember and when we, my wife and I, preached in Greenford before Steve was born, so you know that's a long, long, long time ago. Maybe more time than a lot I want to remember. But we preached in Greenford. There was a couple that started to come to church. And they invited us up. They knew their and I didn't have television. Why don't you come up some night and spend the night watching television with us? Boy, what an opportunity that was. Now, you, if you knew Vera, she was a wrestling fan. Joel, she just loved to watch wrestling on television. And so 
she talked to Betty, Betty Cook. She found out when wrestling was on television, and sure enough, that's the only one up to visit the home. I found out later that Betty spent hours hiding everything in the house that she was ashamed of. I told her afterwards, I said, Betty, I said, what you need to do is to realize it's not me that you should be concerned about. It's God. It's God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you need to do those things that you would not be ashamed to do with Jesus Christ. Let me go on with that particular verse. As a Christian, I have been bought with a price. And what a price that was. Jesus Christ dying on Calvary. I, I, I tell you, I don't know about you, but there's times when I'm taking the Lord's Supper. I can hear a voice in my mind, and you're going to say I'm crazy, but I can hear a voice in my mind saying, Phil, I'm doing this for you. Christ died for me. He died for you. As a Christian, you've been bought with a price. Therefore, as a Christian, I will glorify God in my body. Now, you don't think that I'm doing so with my weight. I've been heavy ever since I've been born. I, I, I was graduated from high school. I weighed more than I do now. Believe it or not, I still have my youthful body. <laughs> but I realize that what I do, what I say, where I go, where I walk, it has to be done with the idea of giving God the glory. Several years ago, I was working at CP for April. My boss called me in, sat me down, and said, Phil, how's the work coming on such and such a company. And I said, boy, they had a good year. I said, they're going to have to pay a lot of taxes and overdraft. We're going to adjust the inventory so they don't have to pay. And I, I just, I said, I'm not going to be dishonest. He said, you don't need to be because you haven't been given the figure yet. I'll give you the figure to put on there and then you'll have to put, use that figure because that's the only figure you'll have. He told me several months after, he says, it's your stand that you took up and to realize that you were a god for person. And I respect that. When I shook my head and said no, I thought I might get fired. But he stood for five years. And by the way, he sent $50 a month to a church I was serving because he honored my, my position. And he was a Jew. <coughs> So as a Christian, I am many things. I have written down everything. As a Christian, I'm an example. As a Christian, I'm an evangelist. As a Christian, I'm a helper to the fallen. As a Christian, I am most blessed. As a Christian, I have the Holy Spirit as my comforter. As a Christian, I know that God will work good in me at all times. Oh, in that list, count your many blessings because the blessings are there. Now I want to ask you, if a person is not a Christian, how would they complete this sentence? As a non-Christian, I am. Remember, we don't come to accept Christ because of the church. We don't come to accept Christ because of anybody in the church or we don't accept Christ because of anybody in the church. This is a relationship that is just between you and Jesus Christ. When he died on Calvary, he died for you. So if you're not a Christian, if you've never been buried with Christ in Christian baptism, for the remission of sins to receive the gift of the Spirit, the dwell presence of the Spirit, whatever it may be, the invitation is being extended. So, what is it? <coughs> Softly and tenderly? Just, just, just as I am. Just as I am. We were singing that one verse. 
And because I'm going to be meeting with the board for just a few minutes right after service, I want you to remember that you as a Christian are most blessed. But if you haven't accepted Christ, those blessings still await you <coughs> as you give your life to Jesus. Will you come? Believing, repenting, confessing, and being married with Christ in heaven as we stand in his